Hello, this is Justin from the Tech Train here. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this notebook paper effect in Microsoft PowerPoint. You see, I've created this uh, piece of paper here that looks like it's been torn from a notebook, and it's a different way of presenting information in Microsoft PowerPoint. It's done completely using the Shapes tools, and I'll show you how to create it in just a second. So I'm going to get started with a new slide, so we'll choose a new blank slide, and I'm going to change the background just so that I can see this a little more clearly, so let's just change this to a, a slight blue background perhaps. And the first thing that we're going to do is to create the sheet of paper the size that we want it to be. So I'm going to go to Insert and Shapes, choose the Rectangle tool, and then draw out the shape of the paper that we'd like. Something like that perhaps will do fine. Next, I'm going to change the outline. We don't want an outline to this shape, so I'm going to choose no outline. And then I'm going to choose the colour of the paper. This can be anything you like, of course. Uh, white is uh, pretty traditional, but it's also quite a glary colour if you're looking at uh, a screen using a projector. So I'm going to choose a slightly off uh, white colour. This uh, pale grey here will do great. Uh, now, once we've done that, the next thing we're going to do is add the lines to the sheet of paper. So I'm going to create the vertical line, first of all. So I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and then come down to the Lines tool and choose the plain line. Now I'm going to grab the top section of my sheet of paper there. And as I go down, you'll see that it's possible to uh, make that line go a little wonky. So I'm going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard and that locks it to the vertical axis. So no matter where I put my mouse, unless I go really way off, which goes, which goes, it goes to 45 degrees, um, it's hard to make that go at anything else other than a vertical line. So I'm going to go down to the bottom, there we are, and that line there I'm going to choose, uh, let's choose red for this line. Uh, so it depends on the notebook that you're using, but some are red, some are blue. And uh, now we'll do the horizontal lines. So again, we'll go to insert, shapes, line, and then we'll draw the first line going from here. Again, I'm going to hold shift down so that the line is exactly horizontal, like that. And then choose the color that we want this to be. I'm going to go for a gray color, uh, something like uh, that one, I think there, about 35%. And uh, now once we've got one line, we don't have to, of course, draw every single line out. We can simply copy and paste it. But rather than right clicking and choosing copy and then paste, instead what I'm going to do is hold down the control key on the bottom left of my keyboard. You'll see the mouse now has that little plus sign next to it. Uh, if I move my mouse over that shape and I click and drag down, then while I keep my control button held down, I'm making duplicates of the selected shape. So I can just hold that control key down and just click, drag, drop, click, drag, drop, all the way down here, like this. Uh, if you're a bit lazy, like me, then you might want to select a whole load of these lines in one go. Then hold down the control key and click, drag, drop, a whole load in one go. Now don't worry about uh, being even with this, it really doesn't matter at all how even the lines are. Because once we've done this, once we've added all the lines, the next thing to do is to select all of the lines, like that. And then in the Drawing Tools toolbar at the top, we're going to go to Format, Align. And first of all, I'm going to align them all to the left. I think they are, but uh, ah, you'll see they're a little bit uh, off to the left there. Um, I'll nudge those in in a moment. But the next thing I'm going to do is, still in the Align menu here, we're going to distribute them vertically. I do that, and you'll see they're all now perfectly equal vertically. Now, they are slightly off. I obviously drew a line which was a little bit too far off to the left. So I'm going to zoom in, maybe not that close. And then I'm just going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge those lines across so that they are pretty much in the center of my paper. And that looks good. So we've started off then by creating a realistic looking sheet of note paper. Um, I think possibly the red line, I might say it's going to be a very small point, but the red line generally is in front of the grey. 
So I'm just going to click on that red line, right click and bring it to the front so it's in front of all the grey lines. Now, of course, the next thing is to create these little um, holes at the top as though it's been pulled from a, a ring binder and uh, pulled so it tears through the tops. Now, of course, you can create your holes going down the left hand side of the paper or on the top of the paper. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to do them across the top of the paper, but the process is exactly the same either way. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to insert shapes and choose the oval tool. Now with the uh, oval tool, same as with most shapes, if you click and drag, it's going to end up, uh, well, it could be a circle, it could be an oval. If you want it to be a perfect circle, which we do, it's going to be a little tricky to get that exactly right. But if you hold down the shift key, then that circle will always be a perfect circle. Uh, the same works for triangles, shapes, anything like that at all. Uh, so if I move the mouse all over the place, I get ellipses. If I hold down the shift key, no matter where I move my mouse, it's going to be a perfect circle. Now I want that circle to be uh, something like that, about that size. Perhaps let's just zoom in so we can get a, a better view of this. Yes, that looks about fine. So about that size there. Um, and we now need the, uh, the line that comes out of the top. So I'm going to go to insert shapes rectangle and then draw a rectangle about the width of the line that we want. Now I'm going to bring that in so it's just slightly overlapping the circle and then I'm going to select both of those shapes and in the drawing toolbar at the top go to format, align and align center. So that makes sure that this rectangle here is exactly centered with the circle. Next I'm going to get rid of the outline so I'm going to go to shape outline and no outline and just to make it a bit easier for us to see here I'm going to fill it with a red color just so we can see it really really clearly. Now at the moment these are still two separate shapes our rectangle and our circle. I want to merge them into just one single shape so I select both shapes first of all and in the drawings toolbar here on the far left hand side, we have this menu that says merge shapes. And I'm going to click down on that and choose union, which combines the two shapes into just one shape now. So that's a single shape and that's exactly what I need. Because now what I have to do is to bring that over onto my paper and line it up so that the rectangle is, is providing enough of a a tear into the top of the paper. You'll see like this, this vertical tear. Now it doesn't really matter, it's entirely up to you uh, how it's going to look. I think I've brought this down a little further than I did in the demonstration here, but uh, I think that'll look great. Uh, so as well um, as we did with the lines duplicating them, we're going to do the same thing with this uh, shape here. So I'm going to click on this shape, hold down the control key at the bottom left of my keyboard, and then drag this out to create multiple examples. And again, it doesn't really matter how evenly spaced they are or how uh, level they are vertically, because what we'll do is line them all up in a minute. Now, that's probably going to be enough. So I'm going to now select all of those shapes there. And again, go to Format, Align, and we'll align, uh, let's try Align Top first of all. Yeah, that looks good and then align and distribute them horizontally. So now they're all evenly spaced horizontally. I'm going to just um, shuffle them along. So I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move them along. And that looks good. There we are. Uh, and so the next thing I need to do is to uh, cut out these red shapes from my paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the paper. So I clicked on the white rectangle at the back. Um, then what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and select all of those hole punches there. So I'm going to click on that and now in the format toolbar at the top I'm going to go back over to merge shapes and then click subtract. So make sure that when you do this you click the rectangle first, the white sheet of paper first because the way subtract works is it subtracts the second selected shape from the first. So I click on the paper first, then I select all of these shapes here and then merge shapes and subtract. 
and that takes away the holes so that you can see we've now got the paper torn. Now of course that does mean that this red line here uh, isn't quite in the right place so I'm going to just shuffle that along using the arrow keys on my keyboard so it appears right between those two hole punches there. That's fine. Uh, good, so there we are. We've now got a sheet of paper. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is group everything because we have all of this as a, as a one big sheet of paper at the back. Then we've got our lines down here, our lines going across. So it's all a bit of a mess at the moment. So what I'm going to do is turn all of this into a single picture. So I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to do Control X on my keyboard, but you could just right click and cut if you prefer. And once I've cut it, I'm going to right click to paste and I'm not going to paste it as it was originally. I'm going to paste it as a picture. So make sure that when you right click and choose paste, you're choosing picture. So this is now a single picture. So there's no individual elements. It's just as though I copied a picture from the internet uh, except, of course, this is legal. Now, once I've done that, once I've added that, uh, I've created as a picture, um, I can add a shadow effect, perhaps, which makes it look a little more realistic. So let's go to Format, um, Picture Effects, Shadow, and just add a bit of a drop shadow there. Um, I'm going to actually make that shadow look a little bit better, so I'm going to go back into Picture Effects, back into Shadow, and choose Shadow Options. And then I'm just going to make the distance from the shadow to the paper a little larger. And I'm going to just increase the blur to make it a bit softer. There we are. Something like that will do fine. So once we've got our sheet of paper, the next thing, of course, will be to add text to it. Um, the best thing to do is probably to use the sort of font that looks handwritten. And there are plenty of those around. I have a couple on here. Uh, let's just add a text box to this sheet of paper here and type some text in here. So here is some dummy text. Just increase that slightly so we can see that. Um, and I think uh, a couple of fonts that I've got on here, I think the one I used earlier on was, um, let's have a little look, Deep Feeling, there we are. So Deep Feeling is, um, that's a free font, I think, that's available. Uh, that's quite a good one to use. Uh, there, there are plenty others uh, out there as well. Uh, but there we are, we've got the font on there. We can uh, obviously color that to decide on the color ink that we're going to use. Let's choose blue ink. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, now, the final thing that you might want to do, uh, as you'll see here, is I created this torn effect. So as well as tearing it out of the uh, ring binder at the top, we might also want to tear along the bottom. Perhaps you don't want a full sheet. Uh, sometimes you might just simply want to have this uh, a half sheet. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to get rid of the shadow just uh, for this effect. So I'm going to go back to shadow and choose no shadow just to make it easier to see. And next I'm going to go to insert shapes and I'm going to choose the scribble tool, which is in the line section. Uh, right here on the right hand side, freeform scribble. I'm going to cut my paper about here. So what I'm going to do is start off to the left hand side and I'm literally just going to wiggle the mouse up and down to create a random rough sort of torn effect. When I get to the other right hand side, I'm going to go down and around the outside of the paper like this and then connect it up. So that is a bit like the hole that we subtracted from the paper at the top. This is what we're going to subtract from the sheet of paper. So I'm going to click on the paper first, then hold down shift and click on the uh, section we want to get rid of. And then back up in the drawing tools in format, we're going to click on merge shapes and subtract. And you see that subtracts that um, torn bit at the bottom. So it now looks as though we've torn, if I zoom in on that, torn our sheet of paper, uh, both from the ring binder and along the bottom. And if we add a shadow effect back in there, uh, then you'll see that that does look quite convincing. So let's go back into effects, shadow, and oops, didn't mean to do that. Picture effects, shadow, shadow options, increase the distance, increase the blur. There we go. And of course, if we were to uh, want to keep the text on there, we might perhaps want to group both the text and the 
paper behind it, so I'll right click and group, and then we can rotate it like that, and there you are. So that is how to create um, torn paper from a notebook effect in Microsoft PowerPoint. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment below. Uh, if you just want to uh, say hello, please leave a comment below. I reply to all comments uh, as soon as I possibly can. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be fantastic if you could click the like button. That's always appreciated. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, then uh, why on earth not? Click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, just click the bell as well. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Do subscribe, click like, leave a comment. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye for now.